If you're looking for an easy watercolour project and think you can't paint, then I've got to. I'm going to show you how to paint these really pretty mushrooms with easy to follow steps. To begin with, I just do a really simple outline of the mushrooms. And don't worry if you don't like drawing or feel that you can't because I provide you with a free trace down and I'll tell you later on in this video how you can have access to that. So all we're looking for at this point is a really simple outline. As you can see me drawing down here, I'm using a 0.5 mechanical pencil and I'm using a rough surface watercolour paper. Now all the materials I'm going to be using for this tutorial I will link in the description box underneath as well as tell you as I work through. This is the outline I'll be providing you with for free and I've just traced it down this way by printing it out and scribbling on the back. So to start with, I'm mixing up a nice kind of creamy colour with a tiny bit of a pinky tone and this is going to create the background of the mushrooms. Now the background for this one is really, really subtle and I'm working wet in wet. So that means I'm applying water to my watercolour paper just where I want to drop that watercolour paint. This is a really easy way of applying watercolour to your paper, especially if you're new because it can be a little bit daunting. So we're just applying the water and nothing else. We are working around the little toadstools or mushrooms and just dropping in that buff colour like this with a tiny bit of that pink tone. The colours that I'm using are buff titanium with a tiny bit of pink. So the pink colour I've added in is a uh, quinacridone permanent rose and all we want is just a subtle background. So you can see how I'm dropping in that pigment only where I've dropped that water and as that paint is settling I'm just gently moving it to the outline and adding a lot of water to the outside just to give it that gorgeous blurred look and just dropping in a tiny bit more. Now because watercolour does dry lighter this will fade into a really subtle soft background wash. You can see that I'm just using the tip of my number eight brush there to drop in more colour and just make it a little bit more vibrant as I work through. The brushes that I'm using today are from Craftamo. I collaborated with Craftamo last year and created these brushes. Now it's really important that everything is dry before you start applying your colour to the mushrooms. So I'm mixing up a nice red colour here with a tiny bit of an orangey tone and we're just going to get this consistency really thick before we apply it to our mushrooms. So straight onto the paper this time, uh, working wet on dry. So we've got a nice thick layer of this beautiful orangey red tone and I'm adding carmine, which is a brighter red tone underneath it, just to give that colour a little bit of variation and to stop it from looking flat. Using my number eight brush straight into the corners and I've decided to add a little bit of a yellow tone just to add a little bit of variation to that colour and stop it um, from looking too red. The brush that I'm using for this is a number eight round brush. This is from my own set. I did a collaboration with Craftamo and um, we created a set of five watercolour brushes and this is one of them from my kit and I will link them in the description box underneath. I'm using the yellow tone to start with at the top of this other mushroom, again just to give it a bit of variation and I'm just dipping in between those orangey red colours but you can of course use any red colour that you want that you have within your own set. I'm a great advocate of using what you have so any red colour will do and you can see I'm just working that colour around the outside of the inside of that mushroom shape there using the tip of my number 8 brush just to get into the corners. Every week here on YouTube we create new content, different watercolour paintings and they are full length every single week. So if this is something that interests you, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell notification so you won't miss out a new tutorial every single week. At the start of this video I mentioned that we give you a free traceable and to have access to that all you need to do is join my Patreon for free. 
it doesn't cost you anything and you'll have that delivered directly to your inbox. All our tutorial outlines uh, are free and we, you can have access to those over on Patreon. So I'm just carrying on the process here, continuing to work around the little outline there. This is just a mixture of all those three red colours that you can see. Now all the materials I'm using today I will link in the description box underneath in case I'm going a little bit too fast for you. Just dropping in a little bit more yellow there. You can see how it does give that colour a little bit of variation and I'm just lifting out a tiny bit of pigment on the top here using a damp brush. I'm just adding a few squiggles to the stems of the mushrooms. This will guide me a little bit later on as to where I'm going to put a darker colour. The red paint is hopefully now dry and so I'm going to add another mix of buff titanium with a tiny bit of that permanent rose and also added a tiny bit of uh, raw umber there just to darken it up. I'm adding this to the base of the mushroom and because I was a little bit too hasty I did get a little bit of a bleed through um, as we work through here which you'll see in a minute. It's really important that all your layers are dry before you continue but I just added a layer of buff titanium here as you can see me doing straight up to that pencil line. You'll notice at this point that the background colour has faded somewhat. Um, ideally Ideally, I would have liked to have gone in a little bit darker, but I do quite like this subtle look. So if you do want a darker background, then do mix your colours up a little bit darker to begin with. Because as I said, watercolour does dry a little bit lighter, so you just need to keep that in mind. I'm just picking up the darker colour here. This is a mixture of buff titanium with raw umber. And I'm just dropping it in here. On the second mushroom, I'm just using a wet on dry technique to apply it to the top half as you can see me doing and just wiggling it into that little outline that I've just applied. And the same on the other one. Earlier on I mentioned that we do have a Patreon where you can join it for free and have access to our weekly outlines here on YouTube. But we do also have botanical art classes on there um, which you won't find here on YouTube. All our YouTube tutorials are full length so you don't need to join Patreon for that. But if you are interested in levelling up your watercolour painting and you love botanical work and you are serious about improving your painting, let's just take a little look at what you get. When you join Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours, from vibrant blooms to fine detail, and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level, so if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. Now you can leave and join Patreon at any time and I will link it in the description box underneath. Here you can see me adding a watered down version of that buff titanium mix and I'm just flicking my brush to give the illusion of there being some reeds or some grass at the bottom of these mushrooms. I wanted to keep the colour palette the same throughout so I'm just using these colours watered down to add a bit of texture. Using lots of water to just blur out that mix into the watercolour paper to give it a nice soft edge. If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to hit that like button? 
it's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it really does help to support me. Now you can see me here adding another layer of red because watercolour does dry lighter as I mentioned before so because I want these mushrooms to really pack a punch I'm adding more of that carmine to the outside edge here to blend it in to the existing wash. You can see once again I was a little bit impatient and that paint is bleeding into the damp paper but it's not a problem. I clean my brush and pat it dry on the kitchen paper there to blend it into the existing wash. So I'm applying the colour like this to the outside edge, cleaning, it, cleaning my brush in the tiny little puddle of water that I have in the middle and then just blending it into the existing wash. You can see me doing it here, outside edge of the painting and then just blurring it in with that damp brush. I do have a full video explaining this method of application and I will link it on the top of your screen right now in case you want to take a look at the application process in more detail. I'm building up the carmine on the outside edge here and I did feel that it wasn't quite dark enough so to that mix I've added a tiny bit of raw umber to darken up that red tone to give the illusion of the outside edge of these mushrooms being a darker value. So straight up to that pencil line and just merging those colours together using that dump brush technique. You can see that I had that little bit of an oopsie moment there again. Too impatient and I should have waited for it to dry, but not to worry. I'm just adding a little bit of detail here using that brown mix, just to give the illusion of those little um, bits of detail underneath the mushroom, as you can see. And with this darker value on my brush, I'm just adding a few more bits of grass or reed on the base. This is a super easy painting project suitable for all levels so you can join in even if you're new to painting. This is a finer brush so it means I can add a little bit more detail at this stage and I've gone in now with my number four brush. Any smaller brush will do. I'm using my number four brush here from my own set. This is a really fine point and is great for the finer details in your painting. At the time of filming this tutorial, my brushes from Craftamo had sold out. You can register your interest over on Craftamo. These are fantastic brushes, they're cruelty free and I designed them myself and I'm rather proud of them. So I'll put the link in the description box underneath. You can see me here just adding a little bit more detail. This is a mixture. This is just raw umber on its own. The paints that I'm using are from Daniel Smith. Um, but like I said, use whichever paints that you've got within your own set. You don't need to use the same colours as me. Just adding a little bit more of the reeds at the back there, just to give it an overall uniformity. I'm using a white gel pen to add the pattern on the top of the mushrooms using the kind of wiggly motion make sure that your paint is dry and just randomly place these little dots and shapes on the top section of your little toadstools or mushrooms just randomly placing them 
no rhyme or reason. Normally I provide you with a free reference photograph to go with our tutorials which I will put on screen as I work through and at the end of the video but this week I freestyled this. I've made them up so there isn't a reference photograph to accompany the tutorial but we do as I said provide you with a free traceable which I will put over on the free Patreon for you. All my paid members of Patreon will also have access to the free outlines to accompany our YouTube tutorials. So you can see I'm just randomly placing this on. Really easy to do with this gel pen. I'm using a 0.5 incliner here. You can see that um, I was again a little bit impatient. I should have waited for it to dry, but I'm just outlining the mushrooms with this to give them a bit more definition. This, proof, this pen is waterproof and bleed proof. Um, it's great for doing this kind of outlining. This one's from Etcher, but use whichever one that you, you like, or you don't even have to do this. You can just leave it without, but I just felt it needed a little bit of something. So we're almost done with this tutorial. I will say thank you very much for watching. Remember to hit that like button if you've enjoyed it and to subscribe to my channel and I'll put all the links to everything underneath in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.